Hello! <laughs> Here are 10 things that helped me out when I was in the hospital. Um, I wanted to make this video because I think there's about two or three people that, um, internet and that I knew that I wanted to make this for because I know that they're going through a transplant. Um, so on top of those two or three people that I know, if anyone needs this, here you go. Ten things. Okay. Number one, I am going to stress this, um, attitude. Um, it's been proven in psychology many times that our minds are very, very powerful. And, um, you've heard of placebo, you've heard of just crazy things that people have done um it's not gonna heal you that i'm not saying that when you have a good attitude you're gonna have a miracle but if you're if you're cranky about it it really will like bring you down and you'll just kind of feel sick um there's i don't know how much you know but like people who are depressed like sometimes they just feel you just feel sick and just brought down. So attitude, seriously, it's, it does, <laughs> it does a big part. Um, okay. Number two, moisture. That is bringing like chapstick. Try to stick with like Vaseline or petroleum deli, whatever you call it, because, um, generic chapsticks, especially ones with aloe in it, there's, um, an ingredient in aloe and in chapstick that um, causes cell reproduction to speed up and that's why you get that buildup if you put chapstick on too much I would know people who know me chapstick I'm crazy over chapstick okay so yeah so Vaseline it doesn't give that buildup um, and then lotion whether it's the triple cream or shea butter or medicated you can do like Cetaphil lotion um it's really good and then um drink water you're not gonna want to and if it starts to taste weird for me because your taste buds get a little um messed up you can put um you can do like different you can ask them for flavored i don't know my hospital had like little packages of that um crystal light you can put in the waters or have your caretaker bring in Gatorades, um, something that will make you drink and stay hydrated. Um, all of these things help you out. I have a little list um, because hospitals are generally dry um, and also the chemos and the treatments that you're going to go through are going to dry you out. Um, at the end, like the last week, I'd say for me, my eyes dried out, like your tears will, will be very dry. I had dry mouth, um, and your skin. So when you get out of the shower, you're going to want to just put lotion on and face lotion and chapstick. So that was something that I kind of learned throughout the thing. Can I, and I kind of wished I knew three tissues bring bring your own tissues spend that extra dollar on the lotion triple soft tissues because um the hospital tissues are awful and my nose got ripped up and it was just it was not fun four fuzzy socks with stickies on the bottom not just fuzzy socks you have to have the sticky on the bottom because you will most likely be a fall risk at some point and they're going to offer you the hospital sticky socks they're not comfy they're not warm <laughs> and um they just don't want you to fall because it's going to be tile so bring your own socks with stickies on the bottom um five uh be comfy and cozy so bring your own blankets they're going to have they're going to have blankets and they have those warm blankets where they put in like the dryer but it doesn't last that long and they're thin blankets and um bringing your own blanket kind of uh, i'll get into this on this next step but personalize your room kind of thing um so if you bring your own blankets it just feels more at home that's how i kind of perceived it um hats 
and sweatpants, sweatshirts, anything comfy, cozy. And um, I say hats because when I lost my noggin hair, I found it that it was like I lost my hair. So um, my body wasn't used to it. And so my head was cold. <laughs> um, so I wore hats all the time, not for like um, the image. It was strictly like I needed a hat because I was cold. Okay, so six, what I was just saying, um, I put liven up the place. Um, it goes back to attitude. If you kind of just, because your room is going to look boring, it's a hospital, like let's be honest, but if you kind of brighten it up, um, bring pictures from home, play music, put lights around. Um, I know, I remember in your, um, I didn't take any care caretaker classes or go to any of them, but my mom went to one and she told me that the people said don't bring your own lights, like ones like this, but I had mine all around my bed and on the little uh, IV stand, and the nurses aren't going to really tell you no, unless it really is a fire risk, if you're putting them like on the ceiling or something, but I mean, it's what livened up my room and what made me happy, and they're not going to like reject that. They're going to want you to do what you want to do so to an extent <laughs> to where you can um so yeah um okay seven find some time wasters and not just like little activities but books um whether it's reading books or coloring books like the adult coloring books where all the intricate designs i found those two were number one um, time wasters because you get so focused into it especially if it's a good book you get really into it um, people nowadays with apps on their phones and games um, bring your own movies you're gonna have your TV so bring cool movies bring two hour long movies I don't know bring that the Da Vinci Code that you never wanted to sit down and watch um, <laughs> Pulp Fiction I think that's a long movie I don't know whatever you're into Bring, bring that. Um, I brought my guitar just because I can sit there for an hour, and that was a good time waster. Um, but yeah, spend that $2 you wanted to on that app you wanted to get at. Um, you know what? Spoil yourself. It's five bucks. Tops. I don't know if there's any apps that are that much. Okay, number eight, wipes. Um, you are going to have to go to the bathroom a lot. And again, their toilet paper are just like the tissues. They're awful and they just are basically paper. And um, when you're going to the bathroom so much, it'll like dry out and then it'll irritate. And then eventually, if you don't like moisturize, uh, you'll get like a rash. So right off the bat, I, I just so wish I knew this, but right off the bat, just ask them for wipes. Um, there's a specific kind that they have. Um, they call them gray wipes, um, but when I asked, I was like, can I get the wipes in the gray packaging? So, um, just use wipes from the start. Don't bring your own. Well, I think they'll let you bring your own, but if you forgot them, ask the nurses for them because, um, I so wish I knew that one. It was just, oh God, would have made it a lot easier. Okay, nine, food. This is going to be kind of... Um, you kind of have to just figure it out on your own because everyone's different, but what I found best is when I was like super nauseous and I couldn't really keep stuff down, I leaned more towards liquids and bland foods. So I had a lot of yogurt. I had peanut butter because it was high in protein and it had all those fatty stuff so that when I had to take my pills, it was... Um, hearty enough to where the peanut butter could replace food for like the the pills that they they told you to eat with food you can um, do the peanut butter and um, also with your pills take it one at a time take them one at a time space them out because um, that will also help your stomach if you can't keep your pills down um, and one thing that I did when I really was struggling with keeping my pills down I took a scoop of peanut butter with a spoon and then I put the pill in the peanut butter 
to kind of cover it and coat it and then I ate that like one pill at a time so that you're getting a lot more peanut butter for each pill so it kind of tricks you that you're eating more and you're taking pills that's what I found um, also going with the bland um, liquid a smoothie with protein in it with protein powder they will do that for you ask you can ask for either one or two scoops I think do a smoothie with protein in it it'll get you your calories and it is it's easy on your stomach I had to avoid salty foods um, and obviously spicy foods because if I got nauseous that's that doesn't feel good um, but yeah just play around whatever's good for you but I found that bland liquid so yogurt was the best thing and that's what I went with for basically the whole thing and I did fine and they were okay with it I was eating you just have to eat that's all they're gonna tell you is you need to eat okay number 10 ice there is a treatment um, I know um, as far as chemo treatments I do believe it's a little different because I almost went through radiation so um, that alters but there is this um, treatment I forgot what it was called, but you take it during your chemo and you take it after after your transplant. It's on like day 6, 9, 11 or something like that. They're random days, but it's like a little syringe of evil. And um, I don't know if every hospital does it, but my nurses, um, they're like, this this new thing that we found out. If you're chewing on ice um, five minutes before, during the treatment, and 30 minutes after, just something cold. It doesn't have to be ice. You could have popsicle. You can have ice cream. If you can eat ice cream for a half hour straight, go for it. But <coughs> cold in your mouth. Be very, very strict about it. Five minutes before, during. And during, since it's just a little syringe, they like shoot a little bit and then wait a minute and then do a little bit, wait a minute. And, and it's only like three of them. So it's not a long treatment. Um, five minutes before, during, 30 minutes after, do the full 30 minutes. Um, it it um, helps avoid mouth sores and um, it just, yeah, it really does help out. And I slacked, so I got a little bit more mouth sores and that wasn't fun. So um, again, just be very strict about it. If you do have them, you can, um, you can bring in a soft birth soft bristle toothbrush um, so it's not as hard and it's just easier on your mouth and everyone wins um, I like mouthwash a lot so I brought in a mouthwash that was non alcohol based um, it'll say it right on the front non alcohol I know Crest has some I brought in the the teeth whitener mouthwash it has no alcohol in it um, I know other brands have it but I know for sure Crest has it um, some optional things I found that having a trash can next to your bed is pretty helpful because they're gonna give you those little cups with the pills and you're gonna throw away a bunch of stuff and uh, you might get nauseous and I just found it was easy just have a trash can next to you I don't know that was for me um, as far as having a sore throat um, they will give you the sepical throat or throat and cough um, little um, cough drop thingies the only th reason I'm bringing this up is because they might not have the flavor you like <laughs> so you can have your caregiver go out and buy it's over the counter what flavor you want that's what I have my mom do because I wanted to be more comfortable <laughs> it's the little the little things um, because I didn't want the honey and it tasted awful so why I don't know the this is how I thought of it is why like have something nasty when you can just have some cherry <laughs> uh, spoiled um oh in the last part the last thing I said um, wrote down was nurses and speak up um, as far as nurses they won't be offended if you say hey can I have can I have male nurses or can I have more female nurses or can I have younger older or whatever um, because I they're gonna be in your room a lot and if you don't get along with them um, 
you know, it just makes it easier. I had a nurse at the very end and she was closer to my age and she was a female and we were just able to talk about Kardashians and boy problems and everything. And I was just able to relate to her and I found myself like my spirits were brought up because I was able to like just talk like she was an actual friend to me and I really liked that that I could just talk instead of so where are you from oh from where I'm at it's like um it kind of got old when like the generic questions but then I was just like able to just able to talk to her and then um what I meant on putting speak up is um that and if you need a medication speak up and ask don't just slave through it and think you can power through this and it'll make you stronger and it'll make you look better because you didn't need all the nausea medication and stuff like that like I took a bunch and it's not a bad thing to ask for it um so yes they will tell you that too so those are all my things. I was able to get it to 16 minutes. <laughs> my last video, it was atrocious. So I remade this. I hope that the three people got something out of this and maybe other people. Um, oh, a little update uh, on my part. I am probably two months out now. I was discharged December 9th. Oh, so that's like I'm, I mean, I'm talking about, like, transplant. I'm about two months out. Month out as far as hospital stay. Two months transplant. Um, I'm doing great. I love it here. Um, in my house. I love it here in my house. Um, I went on a run the other day. It was, it was a struggle. But I ran all the way through. And, um listen to my body obviously if I push myself too much it's not it's not healthy um I'm doing ab workouts core because when you get this week um I dropped like 25 pounds when you get to a certain weakness when you recover um that's the first thing you want to work on is your core uh because that's your balance that's your just like form and everything like that um because I'm going to eventually get back into weightlifting. And if you don't have core with weightlifting, you'll know that it doesn't really work out. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have been doing good. Um, it's cold in my house, but I mean, it's winter. What are you going to do about it? I love the winter. I love snow. So I don't complain too much about it. Um, just hanging out. Friends, come over and visit me. I love it. I just had a birthday dinner with one of my friends and so I'm out and about um when I go to the mall I wear a mask and just kind of stuff like that Costco that place is awful you can't do the test I can't do the testers anymore one day <laughs> that'll be a mile marker for me I could take testers from Costco um but yeah um I'm doing a I'm in a case study right now of how well I do, reflecting how well my mom does. She's my caretaker. And I just did a survey yesterday. They keep up with you. And um, I'm glad to be a part of it. And my nurse is gonna put me in a support group. Um, not necessarily I need it that much, but I think it'd be kind of cool to be in a group of kids my age, not 50 year old men. Like I was the only 19 year old girl on my hospital floor. Like it was all like old men. So I couldn't like go over and just talk to any of the patients. Not that that's common, but if there was like a walk and you say hi, I wasn't really able to like relate to anyone, you know? And so um, I'm excited about it for them signing me up. I haven't gone to it yet, but I'm really excited to go to a support group with people my age that went through a transplant. So it's very special and it's a it's a whole nother community that you join and it's it's a really cool 
feeling to be able to have similar um, things to talk about. Like, it's just like, I don't know. You guys join a community, you just kind of, yeah, I mean, we're the same, so obviously we're going to hang out. But I didn't realize, like, this is a whole nother community. And just like when I talk about my stuff, like, oh yeah, my IV mag or... I'm tapering on my tacrolimus. Like, people don't know what that means. And um, those people do. And I don't have to, like, explain the little details to them. And I could just talk freely and be like, you know what? I'm tired of this fentanyl. Like, it's not working. I want to switch to Advan. Like, <laughs> just like those things. It's so cool to be able to just talk about that. And, like, I had a moment with my grandpa. It was awesome. Like, he was talking about his chemo treatments and I was talking about my treatments and just like, I could just see it that he was relieved that he was able to talk about what he was doing and I understood like what he was talking about instead of that concerned family member that has like the blank face. Like I just saw like relief that he was able to talk about that. So case study doing some abs, hanging out with friends, and joining another community. I love it. Um, love and life, guys. I'm going to join, not join, I'm going to go back to college. I'm super excited, and my ultimate, ultimate goal is I'm going to go back and play soccer. I just, I didn't get um, my fair share. Like, I, I was pulled out so abruptly, and... I don't want to tear up right now, but my, I just like, if it's just one game, I want to be able to wear my uniform loud and proud and actually play on the field and not be a sideline bench person because um, in the spring I was pulled out before I could even play in a game. So I'll probably cry at that game if I get there. We're not saying I'm there yet. I've got a lot, a lot of running to do <laughs> and working out because I am so weak and my chicken legs are embarrassing, but that's my goal. I want to play soccer again and I hope that I can get there and I hope I can share that with you guys. So thank you for watching and I'm sorry I made this a long video again, but um, I hope whoever needed this got it and I will be keeping up or I will update in probably another few weeks there's not really much that goes on that's why I don't update that much so in another few weeks I will see you guys then bye